I thought the script on first reading was just, I, it doesn't reduce it by saying this, it kind of for me enhances it. It's such a lovely, feel good, compassionate, sweet, heart rendering story about Ada Harris and her, her journey to go to Paris to get herself a Dior dress. It's, it's very charming and there's a kind of phrase that's been coined about it, which I think is rather good. It's like a musical without the music, you know, it's, and hopefully, you know, when the film gets released, the world will be ready for a really lovely, heartwarming film like this. It's really lovely. And I've been able to, you know, create Ada, um, I mean, it, the, the period, the late 50s is a period I know quite well. I've done quite a few jobs actually dealing with that period. So all of that I kind of knew and understood about that time. Um, and, you know, Ada is a woman that I recognize from my, well, my later childhood, not it, more in the 60s. Um, you know, I remember characters like her in, in, in our life, in my family's life. Um, and yeah, so she's, a, she's been a lovely character to create. Ada is a, a, a cleaner living in London, in Battersea, and her husband has been missing in the war, presumed dead, although she's never had it confirmed that he's dead. And early on in the film, that confirmation comes. Um, and that kind of links up with her, one of the ladies she cleans for, Lady Dant, has in her wardrobe a beautiful Dior dress. And this dress just captures Ada's imagination. Ada is, uh, she's, you know, the glass is half full. She's spirited, she's, she's joyous, she's humorous. She's honest and fair, but she's a very, she's very game, you know, she's very um, open. Um, and that's a very nice thing to play because it's, um, it's been, it's been such, it's been such fun. I mean, we were filming the, um, the, the scenes in the Moulin Rouge yesterday when, when, the Marquis takes her for a night out, and of course she's she's never done anything like that. And she's drinking champagne and eating caviar, and she's dancing the cha 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 and the mumba. You know, it's it's just thrilling. But you know, she's she's um, so kind of open to all of that kind of uh, opportunity and chance and um, serendipity. You know. So it's, it's just delightful. It's been good working with Anthony, yeah. I mean, obviously he's had this, this film in his back pocket for quite some time. So, you know, he came with lots of uh, ideas and um, uh, clarity, uh, but he's certainly assembled a great team. And for me, that's been, been what I need because I, you know, I don't like working in isolation. I don't like working out my performance at home alone and coming in. You know, I want, I do like it if it can be a collaboration. Ada is very um, meticulous about her, her, how she looks. You know, she may not have money for clothes, but she's always very well put together and she's very neat and clean and tidy. And even when she goes to work, you know, she, she'll go to bed with her pink curls so that when she takes them out and she's putting a scarf over her head to go to work, she still looks put together, you know. It's not slovenly or ill-kept, it's, it's neat and precise. Um, so I, I, it, it was, I was kind of influenced by by my mother and how my mother used to look later than that, my memory of her, but from photographs, um, I do, I, yeah, it was very, it was very good to kind of recall how she used to look. But the team here have been, you know, amazing, pulling it all together and getting the looks right. And it's been wonderful. And the cast has been amazing. I mean, just to work with Isabel and Lambert has been 
really, really terrific and very exciting working with both of them. And, you know, they're both very funny. We've had nice times off screen. Um, uh, Jason and Ellen, I didn't know, hadn't worked with. Um, but again, you know, they've, they've brought so much to those characters and it's just been brilliant. I mean, spot on casting. Um, and the newbies, you know, Lucas, Lucas Bravo and Alba Baptista, I mean, they're just wonderful, wonderful young actors, you know, at the beginning of their careers. Um, so it's been really, really good to work with them and spend time with them, hang out with them. And th yeah, they're lovely and they're both really, you know, they're really on their way. The friendship between Vi and Ada is really very fundamental one for, for Ada and for Vi, you know, they are each other's lifeline, you know, they're both these single vibrant women. Um, and I think also that, you know, the, I, I hope this film will appeal. I think it will because, you know, we're in, we've been in a time in the last 10 years when, when the balance has been changing of films that are made about older women. Um, uh, and there's clearly a box office for that. There's a market for that. There's a desire and a need for that where women are being represented better than they were. It's a film that's a bit of an escapist film. It's, it's, it's going to be really beautiful to watch, um, aesthetically beautiful to watch. Um, the performances are going to be, I think, the ones I've looked, the ones I've seen are going to be just spot on and moving and clever and funny and witty. Um, so, yeah, I, I, think, I think we might have made, I hope we've made, um, what will become a little classic gem. What I want audiences to take away from Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris is joy. A real sense of this, this woman, Ada, who's just really had this dream and gone for it and done everything within her power. You know, she's a little, she's like a little Duracell battery, Ada is. She's always on the go and she's, she's a driving force. And I want them to, to take away joy from watching this character.